Four play for my Barstool Sports. We are back, and it's a very big show. Our very own Frankie Borelli uh, had a huge week, one of the biggest weeks in the history of any of our lives. Um, we often are kind of considered just four idiots floating through the universe with no real purpose or direction or anything. And Frankie has taken the biggest adult step in the history of any of our lives, and he got engaged. So congratulations to Frankie Borelli, the pizza maker. Thank you. Congratulations, Woo! Frankie. Congrats, Frankie. Awesome. Woo! Looks Appreciate great. It. Um, you I married the lover great. of pale men. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was exciting. Um, it was, uh, you know, I'm definitely, like, young. I think I surprised a lot of people, but, like, I think I was super – immature on the show and like i'm probably an immature person but this was like the most mature thing i think i finally done like i was able to actually do like a real life thing which was fun um but yeah it's just exciting to start this new step and um yeah uh i want to shout out actually because the whole day was unbelievable was that like a prepared statement there was that one that one came off no i'm just saying it's like exciting like even though no matter like 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 you're living your life like a normal like whatever like a normal couple whatever you're doing then all of a sudden like it just changes like the next day is just different like and you're 20 you're 28 right you're not that young like i mean you're young you're young but like i mean i guess where i'm from people get engaged when they're 23 and they have right. kids by their 25. Like I it's just think already like, happening. I'm, my, I'm like, I'm young. You know what I mean? Like, I, I Oh, think just I'm, like your personality. Yeah. Like when I'm 50, I'm going to be a 12 year old. Like it's just always just going to be how I am. So I think I <laughs> gotcha. just shock people with that. Um, don't lose that, Frankie. Don't lose no, that. No, I won't. But dude, we went to this vineyard and I got to shout out Del Vino in Northport. I mean, when you talk about, we've gotten so many people that have like opened their doors for us in barstool world and golf world, and and it always blows our mind that people are always going above and beyond. But I mean, this place was closed on a Monday, and the things that they did for us, this place is impossible to get into. Literally, they post on their Instagram that they are they're packed. You have to have a reservation to go in. They hold like, I think they have like thousands of people that go a week, and you can't get a reservation until after December. Like that's just how packed this place is, and. The guy brings it. The owner hears that I wanted to go there and it's closed. And he calls me, starts talking to me like he's my dad, being like, you have no plan. We got to figure this out. (laughs) Guy fucking brings in his staff, brings in his chef from Italy, Massimo, who cooked octopus, fucking homemade pastas, a 10 course meal brought out for my family, her family. Um, he like hid my family, did a whole wine tour. I was able to put up all these pictures of us in one of the lanes of the vineyard so that when we walked down the vineyard, he was giving us a tour. There are pictures when she knew it was a moment. They played music by Dan and Shay. Glad you exist to the point where I actually texted. I texted Shay Mooney and said, Hey, I just want to let you know you were part of like a big moment in my life. I said, glad you exist played when I proposed. And he goes, he FaceTimed me from Colorado. They were playing at, um, whatever the bell center now, whatever it's called. It used to be called the Pepsi center, but, um, he was like, I, thank you so much for making me a part of your guys. Like moment. He was like, it was, He's it the was, best. my dad was equating. It's like, he got married to, um, an Elvis Presley song. He's like, I would be like, if I like just like married your mom and then Elvis Presley called and was like, congratulations. Like, you know what I mean? Like the guy <laughs> who was playing in the background, called up within minutes and was like, congratulations. Like as if he was calling through the song. Um, so yeah, just Delvino was awesome. And if you ever have a chance to get in, um, definitely go check it out. It's a little, it's a little slice of Italy on long Island. It really is. Um, so yeah, I just, it blew my mind. I, I, even my dad was like the guy, Fred, the owner, my dad's like, Fred, like I, this is what I do for a living. I own a restaurant. I like to be hospital. I like to bring people in. This is too much. Like, what he was doing was too much. Bottles of wine like crazy. Food. The food was. <laughs> My dad's like, Fred, I'm gonna. You have to take me out of fucking in a stretcher. I mean, it was crazy <laughs> the amount of food. We were we were embarrassed. I was. You know when you guys like something happens like that and you feel embarrassed at how much someone's doing for you. That's how I felt at this place. So. Um, Did she know it was coming, Frank? No, I don't think so. No. 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 Had to know a little something. I mean, if this is all happening around her, she's got to be like, dude, I don't think on? so. I, I really don't think so because um, we planned it as if, like, I was at the Barstool Classic that day and I was like, hey, three days earlier, my parents were like, hey, we got this um, special wine tour for restaurant owners, Delvino's actually. And she's like, oh, Delvino's. I love Delvino's. They're like, yeah, it's like close to the public, but they're giving like restaurant owners like a tastings of the wine. Um, if you guys want to come, let us know. And then we didn't talk about it until the day up. 
Like we were kind of like just sitting around. I was at the Barso Classic. I'm like, hey, would you like my parents are going to this thing? You want to go? And she's like, oh yeah, that sounds fun. And then I was like, all right, like we don't have to go if you don't want to. And then she's like, no, no, let's go. That place sounds amazing. And then I'd be like, no, it's 50 minutes away. I don't want to go. She's like, let's go. And then once we <laughs> nice. got there, the guy's like, you guys missed the tour. Let me give you a quick one. And then he walked us through, no showed way. us how the wine That's is great. made. So, dude, like, even I was surprised. I was like, oh, shit, I got to do yeah. it now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's, like, it's go time. <laughs> dude, I actually said that, right? So Did we you? turn the corner and you see all the pictures, the music's playing, and I go, it's go time. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it is, it's like a new, like uh, what yes. I said before, it's a new step. It's like, it's like you're about to enter something. You know what I mean? Like everything else yeah. is just very childish. And now it's like, oh boy, this is like real now. Today's real. Did you, uh, did you ask her, her father? Yeah, I did. That was an awful How did thing that to, go? I just like barged in their house before I went to go play a pup punk show. Like right before I hit the fucking airport to go to pup punk. I'm like, by the way, this opportunity came up on Monday in classic Frankie fashion. I have to ask you guys like now while you're eating dinner. Uh, and then I started crying and then they like said yes. But yeah, it was, uh, <laughs> I was like, I wish I could have done it on a golf course or something. I'm doing it like while you guys are eating like Mexican food at the table. So and I was like <laughs> in a awesome, rush. Dude. Yeah. So whatever. <laughs> but yeah, enough of pictures about, were great. Thank you. Enough about me. Let's, let's, uh, you know, I know people like to fucking, they hate. Wow. The show. one time when you said, no, dude, this is bigger than that. No, Screw that's, I people. mean, we, dude, this is a huge life moment. Congrats. Yeah. I mean, all those seen... people that are thinking that right now, they go fuck themselves. They go listen totally. to the golf podcast. <laughs> yeah. And we've seen this whole thing, like through different stages and the Barstool Classic watching you like try to operate, trying to get this thing done. Um, you're, you're a neurotic person. I think that's fair to say. And we were just trying to be like something might go wrong, but you just got to get through it. And I think you handled it as bad as well as you possibly could. Yeah, totally. I, I thought you were very composed. Out. On Monday, I thought you were very composed. I agree. <laughs> Dude, uh, on Friday, whenever we, yeah, Friday when we played um, in Indiana, I was in the shower and like we had just played Denver. That went well. And then I'm sta- I'm in the shower about to go to Indiana. We're getting all these pictures of like lines down the block. We're hearing like 2,500 people going to go there. The owner of the bar said it's the biggest event at Indiana University all year. I'm looking at my elbow in the shower being like, dude, I'm I'm like one crash symbol away from this thing blowing, like on the first song. Like I was just like, what happens if that happens? Like so much, so many people are excited for us. And then I'm like in the shower and I'm thinking like Monday's coming up and bro, like the black in my eye started like getting closer to the middle. I was like, I it was my first ever real life, like diagnosed panic attack. Like, I, like yeah. it was a legitimate you look on WebMD, like, what is a fucking stress, anxiety, panic attack? That was it. So that was, that was, dude, I almost passed out in the shower, which would have been bad. Really bad. I go up to Robbie Fox. I'm like, dude, I don't think I can play the show. I'm like, something's wrong with me. He's like, you're fine. I was like, <laughs> I don't think I am, man. It was weird. Do you feel like a weight has been lifted or is it now just whatever the next thing is, is, is weighing down on you? Yeah, no. I, Cause this is a definitely- big one. That's a really big one. To get, yeah, to no, do. this was a this was a big one. This was exciting. Um, so yeah, now we're working with Cross Country Mortgage. I don't know if we have a fucking ad read for them, but that's the next step. And then yeah, we just live our lives now. Just live your life. I love it. Congratulations, you had uh, you. JT Justin Thomas came in hot on your yeah. on your comments. Matthew Wolf was in your comments. There were some big names in your comments. I thought that was. That was pretty cool. I was scrolling through them like, oh shit, Frankie's got some clout coming on this picture. Right <laughs> there was a yeah, it was a big it was a, that picture went nuclear, man. It was crazy. Um <laughs> But yeah, uh, yeah, the, the the blue check mark brigade underneath that photo was nuts. And it yeah, it was just cool, like guys from the islanders reaching out to me, and it's just it was a very cool moment of just like, wow, like this is yeah, it's an event. It felt like an event, which I think most of the time it's for, for the girl. Like the whole first day was like I, people didn't even say anything to me like all the facetimes and stuff like i wasn't even a part of it literally i was like handing the phone off being like here they want to talk to you so like <laughs> which you guys know i didn't love like i was i wanted all the attention <laughs> like if someone could have gotten down on a knee to me i would have preferred that <laughs> so yeah yeah uh, yeah all right well all right. congrats frank you're Thank engaged you. you're an engaged person now we're right. one one out of one out of four we got a little engagement on the show um Owens. So you mentioned ad reads earlier. Uh, we don't have cross country mortgage, even though they're fantastic. We have um, Owens Mixers, which is very, very good. It's Transfusion Thursday for everybody that's listening right now. 
It's quite simple. Owens has figured out the mixer game. They've revolutionized it. They make it cool. They made it modern. They made it hip. And they've made a margarita. They made the transfusion. They made uh, mint cucumber and lime and many others. Pour it in with your favorite liquor of choice, and you have a delicious cocktail. It's that simple. Um, go Puff. You get same day shipping if you'd like the little Owens action, the transfusion. Amazon, you get next day shipping, owensmixers.com. You figure out which store around you in your little abode, your home that maybe you did buy with Cross Country Mortgage. Anywhere near that home, they've got the uh, Owens. You go pick it up. Again, you just pour it in with your favorite liquor of choice. You have an awesome cocktail. It's fantastic. They've even got, um, on their site, they've got some quick instructions on how to make really good versions of really good cocktails. You make them in like two seconds. Um, I also saw at Pinehurst um, Resorts, they got rid of the pine cone, you know, that little that little uh, buggy that they had. Yeah. Because they built they built a permanent structure that just opened like two days ago um, to obviously kind of handle more of the volume and how big the cradle's gotten. Um, and the very first drink that was served there was a barstool transfusion. Wow! That's what awesome. do they call What do they call the new structure? It's called Cradle Crossings. Cradle Cross Cradle Crossings. I miss good. the pun. I will like, say, but I, that makes sense. Like that thing was doing so much business that you need. You need a real structure with like people working in there. I think they're going to use the pine cone for like events and like drive it around. There was rumor they were going to use it. They were going to put it on the driving range. So you know how there's like that little space because the dra- range yeah. is that huge like half circle. They're going to put it between like the little uh, um, learning center there or whatever that is and the, yeah. and the, where people actually hit balls. So they're still going to use it, but you're right. It is like a staple having that cute little thing right there, the pine cone to get drinks at, but um, but I saw Sheila, who's awesome, who's the goat. I saw her on Instagram. Somebody asked her, like, what was the first drink that was served? And she was like, it was a barstool transfusion. Some guy came through. That's the first thing he ordered was a barstool transfusion. Um, so big shout out to Owens. They've obviously done a great job uh, supporting us, helping us. So you can support them by basically having an awesome cocktail. So um, thank you to Owens Mixers. Um, Danielle Kang Scramble. Four-man scrambles out. Um, we were in Vegas. First one we've done against a uh, female, a, a, you know, a lone professional female golfer. We obviously played Paige Brannick and them, um, but playing one-on-one against one of the best players in the world, seeing her game up close and personal was great. Um, but the whole thing was really dominated by how much shit she talks and how natural it is and how good it is and how she was just roasting us the entire time. Uh, so if you're into that kind of thing, us playing four minutes of scrambles, getting chirped, seeing phenomenal golf, um, go check out on YouTube, us versus Danielle Kent. Thought it came out great, gentlemen. I also want a little I want to add a little wrinkle into this. I if you guys look at the shot counter and and we always say like the shot contribution counter, Frankie led the team in chips and putts at the end of the round. I mean Did you really? I, I couldn't believe that. it. I like I contributed Dude, to you three were making some five putts. putts. Five putts. Yeah, you were making some putts. <laughs> <laughs> Only two That's drives awesome. from me. Uh, eight drives were used of lurches like that. It, when you watch the breakdown, it's amazing how important lurch is on the tee, right? Because like, if I miss that putt, probably rigs, uh, rigs makes or, or vice versa, whatever. But the drives, man, like if, if we don't have those drives, like we're done. We and are was absolutely only, done. like, there was only one hole on like the fourth where it was like really apparent. Like it was just a spray chart. Like T went way right. People were saying touch them all. <laughs> Frankie, you just, I guess you sliced yours way left for you. And then I hit a good one and then Riggs hit one off the map, right? <laughs> but besides that, it's like, you know, gain Dude, of eight? 20 yards like, or something. Yeah, bro, it was yeah, like yeah. eight, three, three, two or something. Like it's not even close. Right. So, right. But I, I, I do agree. I guess a couple of them are just about length, right? Like we have a couple yeah. on the fairway. We take them on. Yeah. And I think you were um, frustrated at me at one point because, like, I was like, let's play up mine because it's on the right-hand side. And you're like, it better not be on, like, a little bit of, a, like, an arc. Like, it better be flat ground over there. And then you got over there and it had, like, a little bubble under your feet. And you were like, man, we should have played mine. So, like, that's one right there, you know. That yeah. was, I'm looking at uh, it right now and we use 10 of Lurch's tee shots. 10? 10 of them. It's a big number. Yeah. <laughs> also, maybe I, I stopped the video on like hole 16 or something. You got frustrated. With I tried to go all the way to the end balls. here. Yeah, 10 tee shots. Yeah, I mean, five putts from Frankie. That's pretty damn good. Let's go, Frank. That's really good, Frank. No um, chips for me. There's just there's no number. We the... There's just there's no, no number next to my chip count. <laughs> yeah, there is <laughs> emptiness. Just blank. They, didn't even, they didn't even put zero. There's just nothing. They didn't even put zero. They didn't even give me a number. They were just like, he was a non-factor on chipping. I think you prefer the the no number because maybe it's a like it's an 
error that they made. A zero, I think, is meaner. I don't know. I think a blank spot is meaner, but I'm I'm okay is with it? that. Okay. Five, I had five putts as well. Uh, you know, I don't want to brag, but I had five as well. <laughs> it's an interesting breakdown. Um, I want to say too the the, I believe the first like two or three scrambles that we did, Frankie had like zero putts made, and so for you to have five now is a uh, um, most improved in a category. I would say. Well, oh, Frankie's oh, mic no. isn't working. He's yeah, not gonna like that. No. Did you mute yourself? Something happened. But yeah, I think until like the last scramble, like Frankie went to like the back nine without making a putt. Like he was non existent. It feels pretty recent that Frankie was like, guys, that's the first putt I've ever made in a scramble. I think that wasn't that long ago. Also, how peaceful is this? Frankie just doesn't have a mic right now. I'm kidding. Well, the look on his face when look we told him, he didn't even start to try to fix it until 15 seconds in because he was so mad. He was just staring into nothingness. Also, the difference what's happening like in his ears, but in the podcast room versus what's happening in his bedroom right now. It's a tornado in there. Oh, no, oh he's back. <laughs> he's back. I mean, what a fucking nightmare this mic is. What do you mean? You're uh, using something different than we use? No. The, so I, we use um, a little peek behind the curtains, a little behind the greens of the behind the scenes of the podcast. Mm. I'm using I think that's this, just this, behind the scenes. All right. I... Um, I use this thing called Audacity, which records my um, my stuff locally, my audio locally. But for some reason, it's like it's stopping. It's like freezing every 30 minutes or so. So that's then like stopping my mic because my mic thinks like the recording has stopped. So I have to unplug my mic, plug it back in, and then I have to fucking record. Why don't you use what we use? Is that asking? Because I have a PC. I have a PC, so I don't have. I'm like not using oh, QuickTime. Oh yuck! No, Ugh. Not, it's not yuck, dude. This thing's a fucking beast. Clearly not. You're the only one that doesn't work. Well, I also haven't used it in like a week, so I think I have to like restart the computer. Like all these things are up. All these weird websites that go on. It's a lawnmower. What do you mean you haven't? It's got to warm up. Is it supposed, it's supposed to be. I just think I haven't, you know, sometimes you gotta give it like a nice clean reset. Like I've, I've hit, like I have so many audacity things open, like from all the times we do podcasts. I just think I need to reset it. It is incredible how just restarting something still just works for everything. Cleans it out. Beautiful tool. Like, turn it off, function. turn it on. And Dude, it just I feels to, better mentally. You're like, this is going to work. And then sometimes to, it does. And you're like, I, I stand by oh. that. I used to live for like <laughs> restarting a play, the original PlayStation and like waiting to see that like orange diamond pop up. Like the orange <laughs> diamond would pop up. And then if it like went away, you knew that it was going to the next scene. But like sometimes it would just kind of float there forever. I think it was either a, a cube or a diamond. I'm pretty sure it was like a diamond. Um, we were Xbox guys. We were always Xbox. You never had the original How about before PlayStation. That, like Sega and Nintendo, though, you had to like do the yeah. You know, you but I was never we were never PlayStation. We just I feel like there was a a point where people, gotcha. people went one direction or the other. We all we yeah. went Xbox. Yeah, we went Xbox yeah, yeah, yeah. too. PlayStation was the I was, elitist. I was PS2 for a second. I was uh, Sega N64, PS2, then Xbox. It was a long break before the Xbox. But yeah, then you were like had... kind of like goaded into it in terms of like everybody needed to play like Halo Two and the. The level Outlook, or what was it? Uh, oh, with the Blackout. Blackout, dude. Whoa, was that a good level on Halo? Just total chaos on Blackout. You could snipe. You yes. could jump up on that little uh, the little kind of uh, uh, outpost, and you could snag that sniper rifle. But the other mean people, there were barrels there. They could throw grenades in there. So you could try to sneak up Wait, and is get that the, the level with rifle. the two? Is that the level with the two bases on, on either end? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And then the, the middle yep. was just like death zone. And there was like mm-hmm. the little arm where you would like go running up there, mm-hmm. and someone from the tower would just take your face off, dude. And then like oh, you'd man, always get I mad because like the game. really bad people on your team would just run through the middle all the time and get killed by the good people. You'd be like, I mean, it was always our buddy Greg would be like, "How many times have we told you to stop running through the middle, dude? Like you're just gonna <laughs> or, die." He'd be like, "I thought I had a lane." He'd be like, "No." Or I, you go in tandem, uh, and you you. Get, I'd always drive the warthog, and my buddy would get with the the fifty cal in the back, and you just rip in the middle, and you just do donuts, and you try to kill the. <laughs> idiots that are in the middle that was what i would that's what we would do there was, what was, oh, was that little called blackout I, outlook sounded right to me oh no, you're outlook, thinking of a outlook bigger one you're thinking of yeah. a bigger map trent oh. blackout was the tight one it was like one of the smallest oh, yeah. ones so there was just pure chaos but the there was um 
was it like Zanzibar was one of the really big ones that had like yeah are you talking about like wall? the Ferris wheel in the middle two T that would go around and around or no hold on I'm gonna look it up I'm gonna look it up because really fast. Riggs I it's, totally agree with you you have that one buddy that like ran out late and if you're playing to like 25 or whatever or 50 it'd be like 49 49 and then you just see your buddy Greg just screaming through the middle it's like you almost just wanted to go out and tackle him and just take him off the map so I'd throw one grenade and a battle rifle hit him one shot game over they'd go nuts in the other room and you'd be like you'd just be sitting there in our room like Greg again dude like just sit tight, man. We got all the weapons. Like, what are you doing? Uh, God, we go crazy. Blood Gulch. It was the name of the of the other one. Oh, I don't remember I'm, that I'm one. Seeing. You don't Blood remember that Gulch. one? No, I remember Zanzibar. Zanzibar is from a Tenacious D song. <laughs> are, you sure? are you sure about that? I remember Zanzibar. I remember... Um... Oh, I remember Zanzibar. Or Blood Gulch now. I just Googled it. Yes. You were on the hill, and there was a fort at the bottom and the top, and there was like a tunnel system in there. I kind of remember that as well. You pop. That's the pop one we always play. Right. Zanzibar's a real place <laughs> off the east coast of Africa. Really? <laughs> Frankie's comments during this section of Halo have been absolutely perfect. Just chiming in. I like the Xbox. That's a song. Yeah. That's a real place. <laughs> is, I like the Xbox just because the, the controller fit my fat hands better. I always like yeah. the big, like the thick controller of the Xbox more than the yeah. PlayStation. You guys pl- did you guys play the original Nintendo with like the Jaws game? Did you guys do any of that shit? Like, like Super Mario? Yeah, but like I'm talking like the gray original N64. Oh, well, maybe just the, ori- no, the original Nintendo. Oh, yeah. um, Duck Hunt? Duck yeah. Hunt, yeah, like just yeah. like yeah. as simple as yeah. it got. Like man, Mike Tyson, wasn't that the Mike, Mike Tyson? Tyson. Yes. So like my sister um actually bought that recently, maybe like a couple years ago. Like you can buy it, you can spend a lot of money on YouTube and a try lot. and get like the whole fucking package. And I remember like Jaws for some reason was the best game. It had the music and you had to evade Jaws while you were swimming. Oh my god. I may actually go play that like soon. Those games are so much fun, man. Like in in the world where so everything's getting so complicated, which I love. Like, dude, don't get me wrong. I play the Formula One game, and you, you still feel like you're thing? on the track. Yeah, I, 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 I yeah, yeah, I, I go around. I, I was race. trying to think of like a cool. I, I was trying to think of a cool fucking. I, 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 trying to think you know. of stomp the bolts for F1. Yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, take it for a spin a couple times. Oh. But. I spin the wheels from time to time. No, but I burn some rubber from time to time. I don't know. Sure, burn some rubber is probably closest. Yeah, we'll get I um, uh, I love all that shit. Like the real, the realism. Like, oh my god, dude! When a new sports game is coming out and they release the features online, like the new EA NHL game, like our new features are coming out tomorrow, and you're like sitting there waiting for like one of the graphics upgrades. But uh, there is nothing better than the nostalgia of playing just a very simple, fun game that you know is like hard to beat. For all the right reasons, and it's just like you have a start and you have a finish, and you got to get there. Oh my god, it, it really just gets my it gets me going. Um, you know what else gets people going is Shady Rays. All right, Shady Rays is one of the one of the great deals really in um, sunglass history, which is use this code for if you never heard of it F O R E. You get 50% off two or more pair at ShadyRays.com. So it's a buy one, get one free situation. Stun is, uh, the sun is still, still shining bright. Jesus. This fall, Shady Rays are a great go-to sunglasses for this season and beyond. Um, Shady Rays is what I've been rocking for years. Uh, I would say maybe two years ago, I ordered like four pair for an outrageously low price because you get the, you know, buy one, get one free offer. So you, you basically pay for half of them. Um, and I just been rocking those shades. I got these really cool the brown ones. I got a couple pair of black ones. They're very high quality, yet they cost almost nothing. It felt like when I bought them. Um, they got a phenomenal warranty, um, which is that replacements of shades are lost or broken for any reason. They will be replaced. Uh, it doesn't matter what happens. You can drop them in the ocean, leave them on the golf course, run them over the golf course, whatever. They will replace them. Um, try that with your high price shades. See if they will help you. <clears throat> little uh, little hint here. They won't. Uh, they provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order placed and have donated over 20 million meals to date. So they're a great company, uh, great people, great purpose. You can use the code for F O R E. You get 50% off two or more pairs at shadyrays.com. Again, go to shadyrays.com. You get 50% off two or more pairs. Um, they got great choices. So go check out their website. 
I've got to um, give a little call back to last show, which I don't remember anything I said last show because I just had my mind on other things. <clears throat> That's fair. I do remember. I do remember we were talking about the moon, which now that everyone knows what I did after that, you have to give me some sort of credit for even having any sort of debate or, or argument about the moon and gravity and mass. And I mean, yeah, people think I'm the fucking dumbest idiot in the world. I did get some responses saying that like mass differences definitely have an effect on the moon like if one thing just has more mass than the other like it may be able to evade the gravitational pull like a golf ball may have such little mass that it might like it might evade the gravitational pull because it's so much lighter that's a one guy message me as opposed to something with a little bit more mass which i don't think i'm not getting back into this i swear to god i'm not okay I, all that's wrong i don't know you know that that's I don't, wrong right so you're you, he was saying that I was all, incorrect on all the falling and the weight dispersion, all that stuff. It's all the same. I watched all the videos, literally watched all the videos. I watched this dude in fucking in NASA's biggest um, vacuum drop a fucking bowling ball on a feather. It was unbelievable video. Go watch it on YouTube. It's crazy. Um, the feather just drops like a fucking bowling ball. It's nuts. <laughs> right. And then you took you watched all those videos. You did all that research that yes. showed that what Riggs and I were saying was correct. And then one guy DM'd you and said – that maybe a golf ball doesn't because it's so light, and that's the that's what you, that was your takeaway. I've, I should have fucking saved it. There was something about like the trajectory of the golf ball. If you hit it really high, it could maybe escape the gravitational pull of the moon because it's only one sixth the gravitational pull of earth meanwhile like a bowling ball if you threw it like a bowling ball it wouldn't just like if it would be like you know what I mean it would get pulled down because it has a little bit more but pull. Yeah, but if you like shot the bowling ball at the right speed and to the right height, it would also escape. It's called like terminal velocity. When something escapes like the gravitational Whoa. pull of the planet, it's gone. Okay. Anyway, another terminal thing was- velocity won that argument. I've never seen that- the term win an argument faster. Dude, where was, what, where, was, where was that, that three I- days ago when we were recording the Dude. first pod? We never really got to that part because we were so we weren't getting terminal, baby. We were just staying right down by the ground and having this whole bowling ball spaceship cruise ship debate. But here's one thing <clears> I did retain. <throat> one thing I retained in physics that like the is when they discuss like rockets and bullshit going into space was that when a, something reaches terminal velocity, like when they shoot a satellite, so that is when it gets past the gravitational pull of Earth, and that it will. Earth's gravity basically can't, right? Like if you just put a rocket up into space, you put it a mile or up into the air, you put it a mile up into the air, gravity will just bring it back down. You put it two miles, whatever, but there's a certain level where it reaches a velocity and a distance where that puppy's gone. It ain't coming back. All right. So here's the message. Sorry. My voice is like, here's the message. I have to get this out. Tyler James, data analyst, graduated with a physics degree two years ago. You aren't com- you aren't completely wrong, so don't let Riggs and Trent bully you. As you found out, things fall at the same speed <laughs> in a vacuum, regardless of weight. <clears throat> that doesn't mean they have the same gravitational force. Gravitational force equals mass times acceleration. All objects fall at the same acceleration. This would be one sixth the gravity of Earth. However, heavier objects like a cruise ship would have much higher gravitational force than a golf ball. A higher gravitational force equates to being harder for something to escape its gravitational field in. This would mean a golf ball having much less than a human would have much less of a gravitational force, meaning it could much more easily escape the moon's gravitational pull and never come back down like you first thought. I think that's right. That felt like Uh, a a mic drop. I I don't, I think it's a different argument. All I, the re, the, this whole argument, if you go back and listen, was I, I was like, the ball would never come down because it's it's so much smaller than the things that do end up coming down on the on the moon. You guys were saying it's impossible because they, everything falls the same way. But I said there has to be some difference because there is a difference between a golf ball and a human, and like there is like there is a difference, right? Like there has to be a difference. Like a golf ball has to have something different that could possibly happen to it than a human. Not everything is the same exact thing in all aspects between a golf ball and a human in space it can't i feel be. like though that's just saying like the gravitational pull stays consistent however the like the weight of the object makes it more difficult to escape that i don't know i just read I, this i think that's right. Right. I, I don't, have a, physical, think that's I don't right. have a physics degree i just read what people write to me but you did all these videos <clears> and you, the one thing you took no was i one know client has said you could potentially be right about something 
But like what he's saying is more to my point. Like that's why he's saying like you weren't totally wrong about what you're saying. Like yes, you learned that everything like everything Riggs and Trent told you is correct. Everything does fall the same way. But then when he starts talking about gravitational force equals mass times acceleration, even though right, I all think- th- objects fall at the same rate, like a cruise ship would fall at the same time as a feather, he's saying that a higher gra- gravitational force equates to being harder for something to escape its gravitational field in, which is exactly what I said. I was like a golf ball would just never land. Like I, yeah, like, and I think that was my argument. Right, so I think the important part there is the acceleration. Like when we were talking before, we're just talking about literally dropping two objects and they're going to drop at the same time. I think when you add in acceleration, that changes the entire game. Unless that I'm is what gravitational force But I think is. that we were ultimately just saying, like, if you hit a golf ball, you don't reach that acceleration. That golf ball is just coming down on the moon. So oh, no, Tyler when, might be wrong then. When, this um, one's on him, not me. When Bezos and, and Shatner, when they take those ships and they go up there, do they reach terminal velocity? There's like the um, – there's the, – I believe terminal velocity can be applied like an overall sense. I believe terminal velocity is like when you reach a consistent like speed that you can't like accelerate anymore. Okay. Um, when you apply it to like escaping the gravitational pull – that is like the speed that you reach where you are now outside of the gravity or you have reached such acceleration and such, um, I guess, such velocity that you will now not get pulled back and you are essentially you have escaped and you are gone. And what I'm what we're saying and what Frankie's I think there is like if you shot a golf ball fast enough, I believe it would escape the velocity of the moon. You might have to shoot it unbelievably fast. And what I'm saying is I don't think you hit it just because gravity is six times less on the moon i don't think that's even close to enough to have you just hit a drive and the golf ball just never comes down like six times isn't that crazy on the ground right i i agree the or i think that the velocity or the speed would have to be higher for something like a cruise ship than it would have to be for a golf ball and that has to do with mass at the end of the day can we admit that a cruise ship and a golf ball there there is we would be able to find some difference between the two of those objects and the way that they react on the moon, regardless of what you have to do to them. They are not the, like the way that I was being spoken to in, in a, in a, I know you're dumb scenario was that those things are the same exact thing on the moon, no matter what happens to them, whether you drop them, whether you toss them in the air, whether you move them, there has to be a difference between a golf ball and a cruise ship on the moon in some aspect. Correct. I, but in the way that you're thinking of it right now, I still don't think that there is like if, okay. If, so if I like just take velocity, a moon, if I take a if I take a cruise ship and a golf ball and I just push them both, like same no di- s- same push push them with the same force. If you push them with the same force, they interact the exact same. So even though what this guy is saying that the because gravitational force is mass times acceleration, the acceler even though the acceleration is the same thing, the mass has nothing to do with this. So that equation is just wrong. Like the mass of a cruise ship has nothing to do. I don't know these equations. I'm I just think, okay, I think, well, maybe he does. So we like, need to like, get somebody is, on here that knows. So why am we I now wrong when you don't know the equation? We can't keep going back and forth on this when we really don't know either way. We got to get Lurch, somebody Lurch, on here. What do you think about that point I just made? <laughs> so I'm laughing out at the whole conversation. I think, so again, I'm jumping into this conversation late. Like if you were going to drop a like two objects, different weight, like whether they're on earth or on the moon, they're going to still fall like that gravitational pull. However, if I were to try to take a cruise ship and throw it, say I had the strength to even lift it, but actually could put the same force in my arm to that cruise ship. Well, it wouldn't go as far and it would drop because it is much heavier and like, but I'm still applying the same force, but the acceleration would be way down. If I took a golf ball and hucked it, I'd have a better chance of it exiting the atmosphere, if that's the question, because the acceleration and f- that I could that would be impacted on that ball by the same amount of force would be much greater. Right. So right, the same amount of force. But I'm saying if you set something with the same amount, like if you inflicted something that they were going at the same velocity yeah. on the moon, but that's a different argument, that? though, right? Because you like what he's saying is correct. Like force, like if I throw a tennis right. ball like and a you baseball throw something with the same like amount this, of force. You- no, I'm saying the same amount of force. Wouldn't one go faster than the other because it's lighter? The same amount of force, like actual force, like miles per hour in my hand. If one thing's heavier and one thing's lighter, the lighter thing will go further, no? 
I'm not yes. saying I'm throwing them both at 60 miles an hour because yeah. I would have to throw the heavier thing with more force to get to 60 miles an hour. Yes. It's like when you throw a wiffle ball, you throw it faster right, than the baseball need more with less force. force. That's what I'm saying. But, okay, but you have so to realize not... that, the wiffle, that the wiffle ball and the baseball are affected differently by air. That's what changes everything on Earth. There's no air on the moon. So if you inflict the same amount of – like you obviously have to inflict something that's much heavier. You have to inflict – more force to get it going at the same velocity but all we were discussing is like the the velocity of things are going if you start them with the same velocity they are going to end up falling at the exact same spot at the exact same time so i think where i'm right and we're going to take a victory lap is when you just said you're <laughs> going to have to apply force to something that's heavier on the moon to get it to the same velocity so there is a major yeah, difference I agree between that. a cruise ship and a golf ball well, yeah, I agree. With that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go, what is the actual crux of the argument here? What I don't remember. Like, what, I, don't, I don't remember it's something about like I, I said <laughs> like. Well, I don't something remember about, saying they're right, and nobody knows what we're actually arguing. There was something about where where we were talking about golf on the moon, and I was like, well, wouldn't the golf ball just like because it's so light and so small, wouldn't it just like never come down? Because it would just like find if, if Bryson DeChambeau hits one, it goes all the way into where he usually hits it. It would like evade the gravitational pull. Cause I didn't, we didn't, at first we didn't even know there was a gravitational pull. I felt like it was just, a, we, were, we didn't, we were, we were throwing things out. And then I was like, well, then I was asking why they have to be weighted down on the moon. Like, wouldn't they just fly away? That ended up being like somewhat wrong, but somewhat right. I don't know. So Rick said that's a that six. There so is I- a, I would say, I like, Bryson's a drive. A ball and a fucking, and a cruise ship. So I would say Bryson's drive would go <laughs> six times higher and six times further than it would on the Earth if it's right, one right. sixth. Right. And so, like, if you tall. wanted to figure it out, like, look at the moon, I don't know, look where things leave basically that gravitational pull. And if he hits it at 300 feet, usually, then it goes to 1,800 feet. And if that's outside, then it's just gone forever. But if it's not, then it's coming back down just way further. I apologize to the listeners for bringing it up again. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it is what it is. I've got two more things real quick of responses that I got from some oh things I said on Monday. Do Josh they start Ward. with good job, Frankie? Frankie, don't let them bully no. you kind of stuff. No, Josh Ward says, ice numbs the pain but does not help at all for healing. Heat and compression is what you should be going for. Now, everything that I've heard about my elbow and my surgery is that I should avoid heat. So, I need to know from what's up, Doc. What should I be doing? Because when I put on ice, boy, does it feel good. Um, I don't know. The, I felt like this guy was saying the exact opposite of everything I heard. And then the last thing from this guy, Michael, he says he's the fucking spine specialist here at Mayo Clinic. Mayo Clinic. The world-renowned Mayo Mayo Clinic. Mayo. We do not tell people to not sit on their wallet. There are so many other things that people do every day that affect their backs that are more, much more significant than this. Um crazy that he didn't like include what those things are so that we can know that again i guess that was just like a wives tale of me like i've I've always learned to not sit on your fucking wallet because it messes up your spine i guess i was wrong i was wrong about three things in one podcast i would say that's That's a big day if we're gonna if we're gonna be (laughs) honest like (laughs) i've been wrong probably about a hundred things in one podcast and just went on with my married day yeah um (laughs) I think uh, Frankie lost his mic again. This is sad. No way. Oh, no. No, you're back. Good. Okay. You were you're just good. like whisper talking and I didn't know there was nothing coming through. Uh, there's big news for my favorite home security company. That's Simply Safe, who just launched their new wireless outdoor security camera. That's right. Simply Safe, the system that U.S. News and World Report names best home security system of 2021 just got even better. Their brand new outdoor security camera engineered with all the advanced tech and security features you want. They got a, a brand new ultra wide 140 degree field of view. Um, you can keep watch over your entire yard. It's got 1080p HD resolution. It's got eight times zoom, which is a lot. Um, you can zoom in on evidence, any other kind of stuff. My parents been using simply safe for feels like since the day one that we started doing this podcast um, and they love it. It's very easy. Um, it's obviously kept them safe and protected, which is what you want to learn more about the exciting new simply safe uh, wireless outdoor security camera. Please visit simply safe.com slash foreplay. What's more simply safe is celebrating this new camera by offering 20% off your entire new system and your first month of monitoring service free. When you enroll in interactive monitoring again, that's simply safe.com slash foreplay. Go check it out now. 20% off your entire new system and your first month monitoring service free. Simplysafe.com slash foreplay. Um, 
a little bit of golf, a little bit of golf talk. Uh, we got Bermuda. Bermuda's turning into kind of a shit show. I just saw there's only 126 people in the field right now um, at this event. This is one that I was at the last two years. I was actually at the tournament in Bermuda. Um, so it's obviously a nightmare to get there. It's an island, so they're incredibly um, strict on COVID, COVID protocols and all that. Um, but man, they've literally every alternate has gotten in the field. Um, and they're still like, now they're probably 25 or so people short of a full field in the Bermuda tournament, which I've never heard of before in my life. Um, Dylan Duchair, our guy, he wrote, um, fascinating situation in Bermuda. PJ tour ran out of players. Every alternate is now either in the field or declined the spot, which means there will be five or more empty spots in what was supposed to be a 132 player field. So now they're down to uh, 126. They're down six spots. Most fields are 156 players, or a lot of fields are. Um, so clearly they're way down. Um, and then the Wednesday Pro-Am, which is supposed to be obviously today, was canceled, and a lot of the practice facilities are closed due to dangerous wind gusts. So we got a little bit of a shit show up in Bermuda, boys and girls. I mean, it's a shit show on the East Coast right now. I mean, if we're going to be honest, like, I don't know, Frankie, if it's bad where you are, but all the way up to Massachusetts, the winds are howling right now. They um, really are. Dude, I was um, driving home from the office yesterday and I was in this parking garage, like waiting to like pay my <laughs> ticket. And this dude was like fumbling with his stuff, being like, we got to get to the tunnel before they close it down. Like there were, it felt like. The end of the world. I guess like they were worried about flooding and maybe Dude, if it's... someone says that we got to get to the tunnel before they close it down. It's like we got to oh, go no. now. He literally said to oh, his, no. his, his he always said to his partner, like the guy he was working with, because they were both wearing like construction stuff. He goes, if we don't if we don't get a move on it, we're stuck here. Because I guess the thought was that if there's flooding and stuff, maybe yeah. they shut the fucking tunnel down. I don't know what the, they usually do with that. So I didn't know. I fucking booked it once I saw that. That's like that scene in the town where they rob the bank and they got to get over the bridge right. and out of Charlestown before they they open uh, they close the bridge down. <laughs> it's like that, but weather related. The town is a great movie. Have you it guys is. all seen the town? It's fucking yeah, like high the anxiety though. Like you you have to be in the right headspace to watch that movie. I we talked about it a couple of weeks ago on this podcast about having uh, laundromat cards. Yeah, you know where um, you have need a card right to actually here. do What's your the company. Well, uh, Hercules. Yeah. Because I, the bank that they rob in the town is actually a laundromat and I used to do my laundry there. So when they're saying we got to get to the bridge, yeah, it's like the nicest looking laundromat you've ever seen. And um, yeah, you you can use that card in the building, which is supposed to be a bank in the town. It's actually just a really nice laundromat. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, fun fact. The more you know. know. That is a fun fact. We started with Bermuda in the weather, and now we're talking about a Landry Madden Boston, the power of four. For Bermuda, they should, just start pulling pe- they should just start pulling people off the street to play, I think. I think that's, totally. that's the move. Well, I'll go. It's, they, abs- yeah. they absolutely should. But, and, and it's, I mean, those are clearly spent. But, like, the fact that they, you know, the PGA Tour has got a legitimate PGA Tour event. Someone's going to win, get, like, into the Masters. There's all this, like, exemption stuff and they can't find players to play that are going to come up five at least maybe six not short um is pretty shocking i look i love bermuda i know lurch loves bermuda um it's an unbelievable spot super nice people but it's a fucking island so like the fact that they even host a pj tour event or that they're able to host a pj tour event there has always been pretty surprising when i've been there like it's a little bit of a shit show but i think you know some people embrace the hell out of it and some people don't uh, in terms of the PGA tour, because like it is, it feels a little bit like you're in like the fifties. Would you agree with that lurch where it's just kind of like the whole town, the whole Island is tight driving. You have to like, you're not even allowed to like rent a car really, because you have to get you, the, the, the driving is so dangerous. And on the other side of the roads, um, it's a pretty crazy place. So thinking about them hosting a PGA tour event and then hearing some of this stuff happen, having been there, it's not like the craziest thing I've ever heard because Bermuda is almost, it's like a, it's like a free for all, I would say. Yeah. And it's wildly exposed. So like the wind there, I mean, Riggs, you know, obviously well, cause you played, um, what was that? Some rum, what was, uh, Bacardi? Or Gosling's. No? Gosling's. Gosling's. Rum. That's right. That's right. Which is, which is headquartered. And you played that tournament. The wind was blowing off the charts. Um, oh, yeah. but Port Royal where they're playing this is like super exposed. Um, yeah. 
So, the, I mean, the balls are just going to be flying everywhere. But, heck, if they need more players, like, you know, I'll fly over there right now and go play in this thing. Wouldn't all islands <laughs> they like should that just be open exposed? It up. Wouldn't all um, islands be exposed? Like, yeah, why I would Bermuda say so. have but, more wind yeah. than other places? Yeah, but well, they should get tree Bermuda's covered just, and, like, you know. They're just right Bermuda's. in the middle of the Atlantic. Like, you can kind of be talked near Florida or, like, the islands that extend out to Key West. You're a little bit maybe more protected there. Um but yeah, I mean, this is just, it's like smack dab in the Atlantic. So come kind of this time of year, like you get into hurricane season, as you know, Frankie, because like we'll start to see some come up the coast. Like Bermuda is not in a great spot to take some of that weather on. Um, yeah, it's a shocker that they host the tournament. I think it's great because I love that course, honestly. I think it's it's like people to go back and forth of whether they like Port Royal or Mid-Ocean. Mid-Ocean's a super fancy one out there. Um I've actually been lucky enough to play both, but I actually like Port Royal, I think, better than Mid-Ocean. Um, it's got an awesome finish. Rory had, I think, uh, uh, he made an awesome eagle there a couple of years ago in 18. Um, it's just a good golf course. But, yeah, it's it's a bummer the field's low, but, yeah, I'll say it a thousand times. If they need more people, like, ask the four-man scramble to come there and be part of it. You know, like, we'll, we'll do it. Dude, that'd be a perfect event for that. We've been, I mean, we've been begging the John Deere Classic for years now, but uh, like they obviously need more people. Let the four man scramble come out there and, and hit it around. Why not? I saw a couple I tweets. A- I saw a couple tweets lobbying for us to get an invite out there. Um, I, I don't know how well we do in the wind. You know, oh, I don't know. How yeah, do be a bad. Joke. What happens uh, if we win the thing? Like, w- that, like <laughs> they wouldn't know what to do. Do we like go to the Masters? I think so. Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, like I'm halfway sorry. through, they're like, "These fucking guys are winning this thing. <laughs> we got to figure out how to stop this." I Riggs think they right shut though. down I mean, the tournament. In the, I think they just say the tournament never happened. Like they just close it down. Like, right. That's Masters how they determine calls it. them and is like, "Sorry, the Bermuda Championships is like no longer an event." Like, yeah, they're like, "This like thing is already a mess." Event. But if right. if these four podcast idiots can win it, then we're shutting the whole thing down. <laughs> if we can I win do. your tournament. It, you got to shut it down. That's the rule. Ooh, John Deere, give us a call. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we couldn't win that. No way. I think we would win a tournament. I do too. I think we would win in Bermuda, although the wind is, would be would be a problem. We don't play great in the wind. There's like a six, the 16th hole there is like right along the ocean. It's probably like a 215-yard shot from the tips into the wind. Like we – it might be a DNF for us, you know, like we'd have to play a driver way out to the right to like another area and chip down. Like it'd be a, it'd be a struggle for us. I think on, we do climate. have to do, and I, we basically did, Oh, we did do this with fucking Kisner. We played from championship lengths, Yeah, but like, I would love to play tournament, like a tournament fucking golf course and just see exactly what we can do. You know what I mean? Like the day after right. a championship. Let us come on Monday and play from the, the tees that they played on Sunday. So it's like they're, you know, champion style tees wherever they were located. And just what are we going to shoot? With the greens rolling still the 13 or 14 or whatever. This is what we have that to seems, do. We have to talk to a major doable. championship, maybe the USGA, the U- whatever. And we have to say, all right, after the USGA, after the US Open or whatever tournament we want to do, the PGA, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday after you guys continue to roll the greens the way you you did from Thursday to Sunday. You continue to do everything, and we're gonna play four days, four man scramble. Obviously, we're gonna there's gonna be some just like there's people are gonna argue that there's no pressure and there's no field and there's no fans, but at least we'll get some sort of barometer for like how we would play on a four day event. Do we go 10 under, 12 under, 16 under? Like, how deep can we get this thing? Do we go three over at the U.S. Open? Are we horrible? Are we making bogeys like crazy? Do we never have a chance? Dude, now what I'm thinking about, too, is like, you know, we talked about video games earlier, and like, you race against the ghost, if you will. Like, as we play on Thursday through like hole six, this is where the field was on hole six. And like, Correct. you constantly have this barometer after Friday, Saturday, like where are we on moving day? And knowing exactly where everybody else was at that given moment would be so good in comparison. Um, 
There's our new video idea. I mean, every time we talk on this podcast about some stupid fucking video (laughs) idea, it ends up being huge. We did this with a fucking four-man scramble. I guarantee this would be one of our biggest videos we've ever done. If we attempted to win the U.S. Open four-day, absolute grind, we got the golf course involved, whatever governing body involved, where they set the pins the exact same way they done Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They rolled the greens the same exact way, left the rough up, everything. God, could you imagine on Sunday if it was like a dead even heat? Like we were just like <laughs> in the mix. <laughs> I think we do well. I honestly do. The only, I think it really depends because Pinehurst we basically played from there, but I also think Pinehurst suited us a little more. Like we're horrible out of really thick rough. Like we're horrible, and like when do Tory Pines remember some of those holes that we played when we played it from the tips? Those holes that was awful. We're we were hitting great drives sometimes like good and being like 300 yards out on par fours like what <laughs> i think that, what i think do? that was my i think that was my least favorite experience on a golf course dude i think i shot a 90 I, there and i consider that one of the best rounds of golf i ever played <laughs> i had i had zero fun sir as denzel washington <laughs> would say it's it, i took it was horrible sorry, I, yeah, I took some time off after that one. That was like, I think I was like a mid to high 90, I forget. But it was just like driving it to the beginning of the fairway, slapping something up there. But again, with a scramble, it's like all you need is one kind of good one. You advance it, those tough par fours. Like we still have a really good chance to make a four. You know, the shorter ones, like we're going to be in good position. I remember I hit like a couple good balls. Everybody hit a couple good balls where then that just like is a, like a catalyst for another one, you know, and like we just work as a team. Um, and you so could take I a bogey. It's possible. You could take a bogey, oh, yeah. right? I like mean, everybody takes a bogey. I'm thinking totally. 15 at Beth Page Black. Like we're probably not going to hit the fairway because we're all going to try and crush one. We're going to be in that really thick rough. Our second shot, someone's going to maybe get into the fairway. Then we have a really tough third shot to get on that green. But if we walk away on that hole with a five at Beth Page. All right, like on to 16, downhill par four. Let's fucking make a birdie. Let's make a par. Let's go into 17 with a par three. Like we can grind out scores. We can make bogeys in major championships. It's fine. Like winners make bogeys. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you're spot on. It would be, it'd be excellent. I think that would be excellent. I'm like loving it. Like the go scoreboard and just like us working against it, talking about like going to bed that night, like. We would, if we could do it where we like tee off at one, you know, I don't know. We could mimic it. It would be pretty good. Amazing. Hmm. I like it. I'm, I'm in. I, I'm, I'm curious to see how, like, how different would it be? I guess what I'm curious about is like from Piners, because we played Piners number two, four minutes scramble from 7,600 yards. We did. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on the course. I, I mean, we, if we did that four days in a row, like, are we as, sharp and as good on sunday as we were on thursday i don't know i think a lot comes into play maybe we're worse i don't know yeah it would be maybe we get nervous everyone's like buzzing that we're gonna win the so but we get super nervous we just suck on sunday (laughs) (laughs) yeah we'd need we'd need the live ghost scores of people telling us all right you guys are seven under on saturday on the whole 14 uh rory's nine under right now Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and we're fucking, we need a bird here. It needs to be perfect. Like someone needs to be, we need like graphics and scoreboards. This needs to be an event. We also right, need to find a golf course that will to... let us extend the championship for four more days. <laughs> right. You essentially need it to the cha- the major to happen again, just on some sort of feed where it's saying like, yeah, Rory made birdie there. Rom made Eagle there. And like, then we're involved in that too. And you can watch it. That would be you know what? Awesome. Invite the fans. Let people come back. <laughs> if you want the pressure, let people stay. Let people stay. I don't think now, people we're are adding so stay. much <laughs> like cost. I, I we're think... adding so much cost to the championship. Like they need to break that shit down the second the tournament's over, and we're asking. Dude, all the game. golf, all the golf hardos are going to be so mad at this segment, being like, "Do you know how much it's going to cost for the maintenance team, and then the course? The membership's going to be so mad that you're going to have to keep." Okay, <laughs> all right. Then how about this? Let us play in the major. Let in us play major. during the week. Great. You don't want the ghost shit. Let us do the real stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though. Um, gonna, we're going to do this. If you wanted to watch something like this, um, uh, it might be on Sling, Sling TV, which oh. we have a great deal with now because we got our own channel on Sling TV. Um, you can check us out in terms of our scramble matches, which we talked about, in terms of our Breaking 100 series, which we talked about. 
um, and all Barstool content that we do, it's on Sling. Uh, Sling is the cheapest way to watch Golf Channel all year long. Sling is the place where your favorite channels like NFL Red Zone, ESPN, MTV, and much more, they're all together for much less. If you love watching live TV but you're tired of the high prices, time to take control of your TV experience, um, which is what we've done. I think we're all um, on the Sling. We've been on kind of the Sling um channel page whatever you want to call it i get channel would be a good one for years now because cord cutting i don't know if we're allowed to say that we allowed to say cord cutting is that something know. you're not supposed to say we were cord cutters know. if we can't say it well we were we removed the cord at our old at uh new york city apartment there nice. we, just, we had sling ripping around oh we were the term the cord. cord cutting like canceled <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that shocked me that that was even up for debate it's like is this well sometimes these uh sometimes on an ad copy there's certain things they don't like you to say I, w- I don't think that would be coming from the internet culture i think that'd be coming from maybe the company but i don't see anything about company. i thought maybe the point a, is, a, a umbilical cord culture is really mad at us using their term <laughs> and it's, it's appropriation it's my, is what it is it's, yeah it's my cord i do what i want with it you can't start <laughs> cutting your cords <laughs> no. i think we're all cord um, <laughs> we're just gonna say it sling.com slash barstool you can sign up now and get your first month starting at just ten dollars you go to sling.com slash barstool um and again sign up now and get your first month for just ten dollars slings great um so check them out uh use golf facts is back did you see her no last way. night? No way. Oh, I did see, I did yes. see something about that. Yes. Didn't she? Oh, didn't yeah. she? Or was didn't she they respond to about? something from like months ago? She responded to Eddie Pepperell at like like six hours ago, and she said, "So Eddie Pepperell's tweet um, was about the bunker incident and just kind of like his My bunker incident, incident? Patrick Green's." <laughs> Patrick Reed's incidents in general. Um, he had written, of course, it can be true that in the case of Patrick Reed, this was January 30th, which is my birthday, by the way. This is January 30th that Eddie Pepperell tweeted this. Um, of course, it can be true that in the case of Patrick Reed, he may have cheated, but that doesn't mean he always cheats. I've played with Patrick, was astonished at how skillful a golfer he was. This is why it's so sad that there are so many episodes like this with him. And then use golf facts responded. Um, to that out of the clouds and said many episodes, no, the sand incident, which she put in quotes like uh, Dr. Evil, an expert forensic videographer broke that down, altered footage from a copy of live broadcast from his actual shot to the shot down and replays, basically digitally altered all caps to publicly smear and cause damages to P. Reed. Huh. Dude, I'm looking tweet. at this tweet and it is. Oof. It's got it's- action. Spicy. I can't believe what I'm looking at. It's a full uh-huh. breakdown of how he didn't. I, I just I'm stunned by this. It looks like there's a Bruder uh-huh. film. They're really breaking it down. Mm-hmm. Um, and wasn't then expecting this today. That's a great line back. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's been all kinds of responses. One person said he used to steal his college teammates' clubs. There's something wrong with him. And then golf, use golf facts. Who? Again, some people on the internet have suspected could be Justine Reed, um, said, oh, the little boys from Georgia 11 years ago who claimed, air quotes, he did because he was a year younger and t- taking their spot on the team, or the fact that he beat them in the NCAA championships. P. Reed has been given equipment from manufacturers since he was 12. That includes putters. That's what that's what Use Golf Facts responded that. The thing I respect about Use Golf Facts, who may or may not be Justine Reed, is that mm-hmm. – it's clearly her, and everybody knows that it's her, and she didn't stop when everybody found out. She was like, I'm just going to power through and keep tweeting from this account that everyone knows I run, again, allegedly, that everyone knows that she runs, and she's still just tweeting through it and going going through and finding old Eddie Pepperell tweets and, and you know tweeting out images of it being doctored. It's just crazy. Hmm. Her tweets I actually are, um, really like it. Her tweets are insane, my fa- man. Dude, my favorite part of this is uh, somebody tweeted one, and she responded, your joke is not funny. The information is still very relevant and widely known, but she used the wrong form of your. She wrote U apostrophe R-E, and somebody, Ashley Wilkes, corrected her with like a your correction thing, and then she just wrote, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) 
It's a great Twitter account, man. <laughs> Thank it's you. a great, great, great Twitter Dude, account. Dude, the way Maybe she the writes best caps, Twitter account there is. The way she, she writes in uh. caps. If anything, there are more chances for them to equally distribute tea towns. <laughs> she is exactly who Dan Soder explains um, is like America. If anything goes wrong, I'm going to absolutely uncork on somebody. I mean, he's essentially talking about Justine Reed. I mean, my God. Goodness, is this person electric, entertaining, has to be, that Twitter account has to be saved at all costs. You know, like they've, they've banished Trump from Twitter and Facebook and all these things. Like people sometimes are like whisked away from Twitter. We have to make sure that we fight with every given ability that we have to keep use golf facts on Twitter because that it's what drives our sport. If you really think about it, like this is what we are about. This is, we love this. This is our lane. This is uh, this is our this is our golf. This is the world of golf that we have been pushing for forever. For this <laughs> yes, to exist. totally. One of her, I mean, another one of her tweets. Um, they go, somebody goes, "This is a stretch," and she goes, "I wish it was, but it's not a stretch by any means." <laughs> I wish it over one hundred and eighty <laughs> hours went into this. It's very clear. Over one hundred and eighty <laughs> hours went into it. What does that mean? Like. Is that her grinding for 180 hours? Did they hire somebody for 180 hours of work? Like, who, what does that mean? God, it's good. It's almost it's an account that has almost 20,000 followers, which right. at, it seems like a lot, but also seems way too low at the same time. Like, if you're into golf and you're into this side of golf, which we clearly are, you have to be following that account. Because it's just must see, and sometimes it goes away for months at a time, but it comes back with a vengeance, like it did with Eddie Pepperell. Give her the pit money; she deserves it. Just give used golf facts all. What is it? Forty million dollars they're going to be distributing at? Just give her all of it. Is it forty? She million? would still complain about something, which would be great. Yeah, dude, forty. Dude, I think the pip dollars. is forty million. Because Harris English was talking about like I have no chance of winning that. It's just a lot of money. They should be doing like something else with that money. It's like forty oh, didn't, million. Uh, didn't Max Homa say, and I could have this wrong, that he thinks that there should be um, like a pip awards? Was that Max who said that? I think it got, was. They got where it's like they they're name. keeping this all very secret, which is stupid, and he's right. Like. If you're going to have this thing where you're rewarding players for, you know, making an impact on social and whatever all the qualifications are and then not telling people like the results, that's stupid. Like go the complete other direction and have an award show and have people come up and give stupid speeches. And like, I don't know if you have to go that far. I would actually like that, but don't make it so it's under lock and key and only certain people can see it. And have like a live leaderboard. Like they should have a leader. They should update us on Pip. Who's like dominating Pip? Like that would be, yeah. if they're going to do it, lean into it, make it ridiculous. And Frankie, I know you said like they can't call it that. It's almost perfect that they call it that because of how stupid the whole thing. Like, it's just, it's penis. smart. It's genius, but it's Pip. It's so dumb that they call it. That. Right. Like, Imagine it they've... sums up the ridiculousness of it perfectly. Imagine if Brooks Kepka wins this fucking thing. I, I could see Dave getting pretty mad about that because, like, all that hype around that match, then he gets, quote, unquote, hurt, and now he's playing a match against Bryson DeChambeau, and, like, we're not even getting them. Like, now Dave's like, fuck it, I'm not even doing the match. Like, you, like he said he's dead to him. Like, that is if, – if he ends up winning because of all of the conversation and all of the, all of the talk around the eventual – canceled match that would be some controversy i would love for that to actually happen to see but we'll how we'll never mad. know with the current system we'll they're not going to announce a winner no maybe no. they're not going to have an award show but they're going to say this guy won this year no, no. what i've what i don't I've, think they okay. do dude i mean maybe the uh, maybe the guy who wins can be like look at this what is it they get like 10 million bucks it's like look at all I think this money 8 million i, I think the eight winner million gets 8 million top 10 gets paid Top 10. I saw, I just randomly Googled PIP standings, PGA Tour. And um, Sports Illustrated article goes through. They do a, a projected finishes, and Tiger Woods is number one. Roy McIlroy is number two. Jordan Spieth, three. Phil Mickelson, four. Dustin Johnson, five. Bryson, six. Ricky, seven. Justin Thomas, eight. Brooks Kepka nine. John Rahm, ten. See that? So it's just about being a good golfer. Then it has nothing to do with being unique on social media, coming up with events, coming up with like fundraising things. Nothing, right? Because I think when this first came out and they decided they were going to do it, we talked about on this show how we were going to do our eye test and judge it that way. And like 
if we're judging it with an eye test on who's been making the most headlines this year and who's been making the most noise, like Dustin Johnson shouldn't be in the top 10. And Bryson and Brooks should probably be one and two, you know, flip flop who should be one, who should be two. Like, there's clearly other things that go into this that are weighted more than the things that we see and the things that we judge on what drives golf headlines. Yeah, but I would say, though, I don't think it's just a test of, like, who's the best golfer because John Rahm's the best player in the world, and he's 10th on that list. True. So I think clearly it is a little bit different, but you're right. Like, Brooks, the fact, when I saw DJ as number five, I found that to be pretty shocking. Like, DJ, I love DJ, but he ain't he ain't top five in my PIP awards, that's for sure. Right, and I, I get the he, Tiger Woods thing. Done Tiger Woods this year, I feel like. Who? Yeah, DJ hasn't done anything this right. year that's, like, memorable. And I guess I understand Tiger Woods being in the top spot because he's Tiger Woods. But even that, like, I think it should be Brooks and Bryson 1 and 2. Like, going away, they've driven the most conversation for the sport. Good or bad. I agree with that. Yeah, I think that's right. I think, But I guess, yeah, I mean, they do weight things differently. They weight things and they have that. They remember, they have the negativity clause, which is stupid. They have the, the clause, clause that says... Sports. It's like a it's like a subjective negativity clause where it's like if that's not deemed you know positive for the sport it doesn't go into the pip. You're wrong to do that. Everything should go into it. No need, such thing uh, as bad publicity. Guy, they need a mass times acceleration type of equation for it. <laughs> Are you in the raw data? I mean, like you can go into the SI article and then it just brings you to a Google spreadsheet. Um, where Dude, there, there, is, there, is, there is an equation there. Oh, yeah. Tiger Woods is just one, clearly, with like 500% better than anybody else, it looks like. Um, wouldn't you say that's negative stuff? Like, wouldn't like wouldn't wouldn't Tiger's pip stuff this year be it has negative to the sport? players on here. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know. Yeah, dare anybody say Tiger's bad for the sport? Good luck no, with that one. Well, no, but like... Right. I'm no, I'm saying we, like the news that came out wasn't positive this year. The reason he was as big as he was this year is because he drove off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think he would have been huge if he didn't, right? Like that's. But he, the, yeah, if, uh, yeah, you could do a lot of those ifs, ands, or buts, but he didn't. I also think, like, he drives more new – like, if you just Google Tiger Woods news stories, like, everything he does throughout the whole year is, like, a news story that gets more attention than anyone else in the world of golf. Like, I agree. If he shows up for a doctor's appointment like, and he's just photographed in L.A., that's bigger than almost all nine other guys, anything that they do the whole year. I agree. I'm just saying, if you add that negativity clause and it, like – it certainly the news certainly wasn't this is great for golf as the helicopter was swarming over the car and it was like tiger woods was being rushed to the hospital and we didn't know if he was still alive that certainly wasn't sure it was the biggest news of all time it certainly wasn't hashtag great for golf though so i mean there are guys that i'm look- <laughs> are trying yeah. to do a lot of good things for golf that aren't going to win it but I, the whole thing is bullshit i still think tiger should win because he should win everything he does but I'm just saying that is a complete lapse in their judgment on how who should win this. Like th- that's they have the they have the equation wrong. But don't also, put in the clause. They don't and, and they'll the never clause. have to they won't they won't have to own up to any of it cuz they don't release the results. So it'll just right. come and go and players will get paid out and we won't have any That's the other thing. Like if you release the the pip awards in in some sort of way however you want to do it that in itself drives conversation for golf like it's it, it becomes like a a self fulfilling thing where it's like oh now we get to debate on who we think should have won the pip against who did actually win the pip but instead they're just going to hold the results like they're I think eventually documents. they'll get to a point where they release it I think they'll have to get to a point where they release them you have more faith in that than I do because I don't think they will gotta get rid of the suits. <laughs> I was thinking I was trying to think back if Charlie and, and Tiger playing together was this year but that was at the end of 2020 because that, that drove great a, for golf. Yeah. 
That was that was hashtag great for golf. Oh my god, dude. very much so. Remember, remember how amazing that was when Charlie stepped up to the tee and just roasted driver and Tiger hit it to three feet and Charlie made the putt. Like we were just like, is this is real life. How about when Charlie life? would just rip driver, turn around and then just tell dad, tell dad like, it's good. I'm in the fairway, yep. I don't need to hit. Come on up. It's like out of this world. <laughs> and then how uh, we got from there to where that, we eventually that ended up one was there was one time where he just made contact and turned around and said, "Good, no, no yes. idea if he was going to clear the water or <laughs> if it was going to end up in a good spot." <laughs> uh, I miss that. I wish. I hope he's back. You know what I was thinking, too, because we saw that clip of Tiger standing behind Charlie. The next time we see Charlie Woods, he's going to be completely different. Like Those kids grow right, so much at that age. Second. Yeah. yeah, He's going to be like talking with a deep voice and shit. Like, he's going to uh, be taller yeah. than Tiger. Tall, yeah. Dude, when he's like 13, 14, he's going to be fucking like an adult. Yeah, you do grow fast at that age. What is he, 11, 12? He's 12 now. He'll be like 13 by the time we see him next, probably. Yeah, he'll 13, be thirteen. You're just a person, dude. My yeah, like, I'm thinking back to like my 12 year old Williamsport baseball team. Like we started having some real dudes on our team at 12 and 13 years old. Some real dudes talking about their penile and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, I get, remember going hockey tournaments all over the place. You'd, like you, I think at that age, like you're probably what you're probably around eighth grade. Is that 13 something? Like yeah, that? junior high. You're fucking rolling. right. The guys are like some shower that- naked in the fucking locker room and stuff. Right. It was like oh shit, like that. Those kids you are do. big. <laughs> oh yeah, you get to that point. Certainly in football too. I remember there was just oh, I wish I could remember the kid's name, but he was uh, f- Metro football when you're that age, and everybody else shows up and like you <laughs> you don't know what you're doing. You're like a you're Bambi on ice, and then there's one guy who looks like he's 35 and can throw a football <laughs> 80 yards, and you're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Thank God he's on our team. But then the other mm-hmm. team would have two of those guys, and they would just murder everybody. It is <laughs> like at that age, if you if you mature just a little bit faster you're Ooh, dominant advantage you're dominant dominant and there's those like kids that everybody of, knows i looked like i just got out of a fucking hospital for treatment like at 12 <laughs> yeah. years old i was in a fucking i was in a hospital gown essentially walking out there i was all bone and fucking i i mean you put me next to fucking louie and rick who were fucking standing out there they were six foot one thick boys i'm sitting there like hey wearing number Frankie, two for never, Derek jeter you never played pop warner did you no, dude. No. Oh, dude, that would have been dynamite. Your little I legs, like those little giants pants. Kid. Yes, yes. <laughs> Walking out there <laughs> after he takes the alga seltzer yeah. to him. <laughs> and I, for that age, I mean, I've been big ever since I came out. Now I was one of the bigger guys, but like I was middle tier. There was just that one higher tier that was just they. Sh- they honestly shouldn't have been out there. Like my, my we had a kid that was six unfair. foot. Was, we had a kid that was six foot three on our twelve on our twelve year old baseball team. He was a right, fucking exactly. Freak. Yeah, I think my brother was six one in the eighth grade. It was like he's gonna dominate football. I'm sorry, <laughs> he's gonna win this. <laughs> yeah, there was a kid. There was a kid who, who could dunk in seventh grade in middle school. And people were like, "Yeah, that kid's awesome." <laughs> we, had, we had this <laughs> That's kid fucking, fucking awesome. Everybody else kid, can't even hoist a basketball up there. We had this kid in in fifth grade. I think his name was Jeff, <laughs> and. He'd put his hand on the blacktop as long like we used to play a game who could hold their hand on the blacktop and and not burn their hand and and like everyone used to fucking just lift it off because it was so hot and Jeff would just fucking stare at everyone. He was a big dude, the running back of like his team, and then he'd be able to dunk like fifth grade, sixth grade. He was like no joke, like sixth grade. He was like six foot one. And he was able to dunk on like the seven or eight foot hoop. And we all thought he was Superman, man. Like he was able <laughs> yeah. to hold his hand on the fucking blacktop and then dunk. I was like, dude, I can't even like, I'm like, I don't even know what my body is. I don't even. Right. If you, if you could palm a basketball in middle school, you were a sur- superhero. Oh, dude. I just didn't have that shit, man. <laughs> I had you still don't. That. No, I don't have any of that. I just remember the first guys in hockey. That would like after practice would just take all their clothes off. It used to be you would just take your gear off, then you'd put like your clo- your normal clothes on. You just walk out disgusting and sweaty. And then there was like a summer all of a sudden where a few guys would just get ass naked and bring a towel and walk right through the middle of the locker room and go shower. We were all like, oh fuck, that those are like adults. Those are like they got courage right there. And then body hair is a big topic. Six months or something, everybody would kind of like 
you'd bring soap and shampoo, and then everybody's just showering for the rest of your life. Everybody just showers after hockey. If I did that Body walk through the locker, if I did, conversation at that age, if I did that walk through the locker room at that point, the whole the whole fucking locker room would probably have to start clapping like uh, like I was doing something brave. Uh, growing up is weird, dude. Oh, it's really, it's crazy. Crazy. really weird. It's crazy, especially when you play sport. And then, then you get to a point where you're just then you just level off for the rest of your life. It's like oh, you're just like you basically you reach your terminal velocity. You're just there. You're just not floating forever. That's like you're just dude. an adult. Rudy, who played, he, he, one of our best friends at Barstool, fucking love him, Rudy Junda, rude boy. Rude boy. Um, he played college hockey at Denver and won a national championship. Shout out, Rudy. He was telling me, which I never thought of, that like 15, 16 year old hockey was absolute fucking chaos where guys were starting to learn how to absolutely light people up. Like he was saying that it was more like dangerous and scary than like the NHL where like these big body kids like that you're talking about that have been walking around with their cocks out since they were like eight years old in the locker room are just leveling off kids that are like my size because like maybe it was even like 14 year old hockey where like kids weren't developed yet and other guys were ready for the NHL and they would just lay people out just like it was full on fucking chaos which I never thought about like that age gap or not the age gap but that maturity gap and and just having that like you know, muscular difference is probably scary. Big time. And you're going so fast. I mean, it's, you know, like you can only run so fast, but, and, and yeah, like, but skating, like you're going fast and you're like going fast without trying to, cause you just glide around and people all of a sudden it goes from, you can pretty much skate around with your head down because you can't really get hit. And then all of a sudden they just implement hitting and people just get, Buried in hockey. I mean, yeah. buried. He was saying, like, that's the thing he misses most is just running around like a freight train, just being like every kid that he could fucking find that his head down, just just standing over him, feeling because you also feel like you're like the cool guy. I'm assuming, and you've got all this testosterone now. You're running around, you're skating around as fast as you can. I would have gotten fucking lit up, man, if I was out there. You would have been literally murdered. You would have been. Murdered. Oh god, <laughs> they got hair in their pits, um, just leveling Frankie Borelli. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Fall. Fall is in full swing. There's a little bit of chill in the air. The Barstool Sports Store has you looking your best this season. That's true. We got all kinds of hoodies in there. Um, we've got our For the Cure assortment with 100% of the net proceeds supporting Breast Cancer Research Fund. So go check that out if you haven't. It's stored at barstoolsports.com. But yeah, we got hoodies in there. We got um, uh, pullovers, which we're obviously a big Q-Zip squad. We love Q-Zips. Um, oh, yeah. We got crew necks. I know Trent's a crew neck guy. He's wearing one right now. I love. Oh, I'm actually not. I'm wearing a uh, short sleeve. I wish I, I wish I was wearing a crew neck. I know I could have lied. I'm but... wearing a crew neck. Okay, there we go. There we go. With this okay, really cool right. yeah, wavy, yeah. like that '70s show style Barstool Sports logo. I really um, want one of those. Actually. Very cool. I, the Barstool store has gotten so elite, especially the golf section of it. I mean, how can you just pass up brands like Peter Millar and Travis Matthew? And I mean, it it's. And Unreal. Unreal gets slept on, man. It absolutely gets slept on. That that stuff is so freaking good. And the and the 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 risks we take with their clothing, with all these fucking Barstool logos over them, you're like, ah, oh, maybe that's like too much, too crazy. When you take it out of the packaging and you wear it, it's the coolest fucking college shirts ever. I wore one in the Danielle Kang um for uh, four man scramble. I got so many comments being like, dude, that thing looked fucking tight. Like real nice. We got great stuff. Honestly, the store, like you said, the store used to be just like $15 t-shirts forever and ever and ever. And man, our merch team works their balls off and they have grown so dramatically and they bring us these ideas and we work with them and we make bold decisions like Brady said on the Unreal stuff, on Peter R stuff, on all kinds of good stuff. So store.barstoolsports.com. We got everything you could possibly Allison imagine, and man. Pilar, shout out to those girls. They're just grinding all the time. And Alex, they're all great. And so Alex, our merch team. They crush it. Um, so big thanks to them. But you can go really thank everyone by just going and buying stuff in the store. Go to store.barstoolsports.com. Um, all right, boys. Anybody got anything else? Because I'm ready to ship it and get out of here. Um, no, keep an eye so. out 
I'm heading right now. I'm doing a really cool project right now. I know eBug's going to be coming with me, but keep an eye out if you're a hockey fan, if you're an Islanders fan specifically. We're heading over to UBS Arena, and we got a little project going on. Um, I've been pretty quiet about it, but I want to start getting the hype going for this thing because what we're doing over there is going to be fucking psychotic. I mean, it's really, really cool. I'm super jacked up about it. Um, I'm sure you could probably figure out what it's going to end up being. And we're, I mean, we're filming all the time at this arena that's being <laughs> built. So, um, yeah, it's really exciting. I'm getting over there right now. It's just I have like that giddy feeling that I always get like when we're about to do a big project. It's so much fun, man. I fucking love it. And I wear a hard hat, boots, and an orange vest. And let me tell you something. You guys know how I freak out when like I'm doing the wrong thing or I think people are looking at me. I almost didn't walk in because I bought new work boots. You needed work boots. And they're so clean and light brown that I thought that I was exposed. I, I was exposed amongst all these construction workers. You know, these hard men, that lunch pail, hard hat type of guys. They're like, look at this fucking guy who just got brand new $100 fucking work boots. Never stepped on a construction site in his life. Because I had no dirt on these things. No, right. no scruffs. Everything was perfect. My pants, my helmet was pure white. No stickers on it. I felt like an asshole. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to walk in. I'm like, look at me. I, I'm a fucking circus act. Yeah, right. you should have held the boots out. Real quick. <laughs> right, I was say you should have held them out the the car door, like and dragged them along the street I before was you got thinking, there. Dude, I was gonna do it. There was like a gravel road. I was just gonna rummage them through it. But then the person we were meeting was walking out to us. I was like, "Fuck!" I was about to do it. <laughs> and what's lamer, you having super clean work boots or having dirty ones that you just kicked around in the gravel That's outside? Just obvious. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. I remember I carried center blocks around the New Jersey Devils new stadium for a summer. And when I first walked in, I was just like this little choir boy, which is like, here's my first day of work. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then by the end, you're like, all right, I'm somewhat fitting in. Um, but certainly, yeah, I'm sure you <laughs> they, people uh, looked at you and be like this little. Are they, are they steel toe? They're steel toe, yeah. Good steel man. Got boots. nice boots. I got nice boots, yeah. yeah. What do you know about boots, Trent? What the fuck was that question? No, when I, I work for the city, like doing like wow. um, just like mowing lawns and trimming hedges and stuff like that and you had to have steel toe boots that's the only time i ever had to own those what were you doing time was that a was that a community service <laughs> no no that was just like what'd you fucking uh, do? summer job you sure it was fun that? you drove city trucks around and you just like cut branches down shit like that it was fun i was you know super tan super in shape sounds like community service <laughs> no 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 i had to have steel toe boots though He's like, I Steel was picking up garbage nice. on the side of the highway. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> had a chain around my had, waist. So I, had had shackles, I, had, I had shackles around my ankles. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, I'll give a shout out to Great Horse. I did a buddy's trip up there this past weekend. Awesome track. Um, friends of Barstool. Um, just good people. But if you got a couple weekends left here in the New England area, so go plan a golf trip and have some fun with your buddies. The hang there looked awesome. Oh, dude, it was great. The... So it is awesome we, there. we were down at like uh like the grill kind of like restaurant area and they actually have places, you know, that like you can stay on property for members and whatnot. So we were lucky enough, got one of those, went down to the restaurant to eat and they're like, oh, we're like packed for the next like two hours, but you can go up to the men's locker room. So we went up there, we ordered like wings, we played some cards, had poker, like it was off the awesome. charts. It was a great experience. So it was sweet. So anyways. Encouraging a golf trip as we close out the season here as it gets cold and bitter. It's nice. Very nice. Great Gray logo there, too. Great horse has a great, great horse has a good logo. Um, all right, boys. Well, everybody have a lovely weekend. Um, hope everything goes well in Bermuda. Congratulations again to Frankie and Thank um, you. hit it hard. Hit it hard. hard. Hit it hard. <laughs> I didn't know if Trent was not going to give a hit it hard. He just gave a big thumbs up, but <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, that's... that was a thumbs up to Frankie. <laughs> well done, Frank. Thanks. See you, boys.